Hi guys, how you doing? Welcome to week five. So you you have your portfolio, all your ducks in a row, right? And it, it it's time to go out and start looking for work. So what do you do? How do you act? What do you do? How do you dress? How, how do you approach the situation? And that's what this week is all about. And it's really, really super important. So right here, I'm in week five. Um, to start week five overview and then um, this from what the employer wants all the way down to um, community actually all the way down to you'll never be done with your portfolio it's all super important stuff um, especially this right here this is written very well um, uh, as far as what the employer wants I mean this is pretty candid and um, there's just about everything is covered here. If you have any questions on any of these, let me know because I've been through every one of these situations on both ends of the table many times. Um, these interview questions, I, I would, you know what, before, when you guys still have access to this class, go ahead and grab these um, and just study them because you're going to get questions like this. Um, can you talk about your weaknesses? They're trick questions, sure, but you know what? If you're prepared for them, and one of the reasons people ask you that question is because they expect you to be prepared for it. So if you stumble on that question, they know you're not prepared for the interview, and they're, they're, and a red flag goes up. Um, little interviewer tricks. So um, so be prepared, you know, and, and these are really, this is a great set of questions, really a great set of questions. and and observations and uh, instructions, as it were. So be sure to, to get those um, interview tips. These are really good, too. The only one here that isn't, um, that, that I would add to this is um, let, the, um, let, let the interviewer set the pace. Um, don't try to set the pace yourself, ever. Don't say a word or don't show any personality until. Well, I shouldn't say don't don't show. Just wait until you get some 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 cues from the interviewer. Um, if they have a smile on your face, put a smile on your face. If they're very stern and business like, it it, it might behoove you to be the same. Um, so take the cues that are given to you in in an interview and use them um, to your advantage. And this is what this week is about in, in, as far as your first assignment. This is sequencing. And read through this. It's all about how, you, in what order do you present your work. It's pretty important. Um, it makes a difference. It really does. Uh, what order you make your, you, you, and also in what order you place your work, depending on what job you're going um, to interview on. For example, if you're, if you, if you're going to a job from a, a magazine layout um, interview, you know, you're going to, Put in your portfolio more magazine, more layout work, more examples of, of layout and typography um, than as opposed to if you were going to a, a, a photo retouching job um, where you would concentrate, of course, on your digital retouching skills. So, be you know, it's expected to change your portfolio out here and there um, depending on the interview and the type of company that you're interviewing with. Portfolio do's and don'ts. Good stuff. Good stuff. This list should be five or six pages long. Easy stuff to find. Just do a search out. Uh, um, um, exactly this. Portfolio do, graphic design portfolios do's and don'ts or student portfolio um, design portfolio do's and don'ts. You'll get a ton of of uh, of um, resources. A final inspection communicating you, performing the white glove test, okay? I'm going to tell you right now, guys, listen, if, if there's one typo in, in any of your work whatsoever, you're done. Um, if, if, if you have anything that's out of alignment or misplaced, you're, you're probably not going to have a chance. So it's so important to get your, you know, get everything straight. In terms of proofreading over and over, and also let's let somebody else proofread it. It doesn't have to be a designer. Probably better that it isn't. You know, uh, because quite often a design a, a non-designer is going to see things that we don't, that we don't see. Like typically, you know, a lot of a lot of people won't see uh, something misaligned out of one or two 
to uh, letter spaces or you know, M spaces. And and as a designer, you, that can't happen. So if you're not seeing it, somebody else sees it. That's a good thing. So you know, try to get as much comment as you can. You'll never be done with your portfolio. And that's obvious. So and then assignment one is this is your your um, sequencing. So so this is, all has to do with with how, in what order, and for what logical reason is the presentation in this specific order. So in other words, you don't just throw your stuff in a book and say, ah, oh, look at this and this, 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 and this. You say, okay, look at this, and then you have to time it out like, like you're actually turning the pages yourself. Do you see what I'm saying? So you're actually timing the, the, the cadence of your presentation. Um, you're probably going to find more uh, interviewers are going to spend more time towards the first half of your presentation. They're probably going to fall asleep a little bit between the, 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 the first half and the, not the second half, but the second two thirds. And then the end has to be strong. So, of course, people always um, recommend that you, 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 you design as such. Okay, one more thing I want to go through is this real quick demo tutorial. This is, I am in InDesign right now. My window doesn't show everything but what you see on the page. Across the top uh, menu bar in, in, in InDesign, uh, you're going to look for uh, the layout drop down menu. Under the layout drop you down menu, you'll see a, a rulers, uh, I'm sorry, uh, create guides command. So I'm going to just roll down to that and I'm going to click on that and I get this dialog box. Okay. So I want to just take this dialog box and I'm going to move this guy over just a little bit so that you guys can see what goes on when I work the dialog box. Okay. I have my preview uh, window checked, so be sure you do the same. Watch the number of rows when I click. Okay. See the guides. Okay, so here is six rows. Let's go over to columns. So here I've got a five by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to okay that. Note in this guy right here, right here in the options dialog, you have the option to fit guides to margins or page. I'm going to click to page, note what happens. That changes that guide so that you are, are designing all the way to the end, edge of the page is where the guide goes. Now, if I take the guide and fit it to the grid, I mean to the margin, it only fits inside that main margin. And, and as you can see, it switches as such. Okay, I'm going to okay this, and I want to show you a couple of things now. We have this grid. You're, the work is going to be mathematically correct, okay? It's going to be universally pleasing to look at because it is mathematically correct. Every one of the boxes in this particular grid has a mathematical relationship to one another, okay? I want to do something real quick. I want to go back to my Create Guides and I, and I want to do something here. Okay, I'm just going to remove those guides, and I'm just going to start over because I want to show you something that I forgot to do. I think that's what I had. Okay, so um, fit the pages, fit the margins. All right, so I want you to see over here the gutter. I want to close that gutter down because these squares right here, uh, these intersections and these um, lines right here indicate the, the spaces in between. So the live area would be these boxes in inside here. So I want to close the gutter down, and I'm going to go down to about a point, uh, a zero eight on both sides. Okay, so see how that's nice. I'm going to okay that. Now I want to show you something. I'm just going to grab my tool, my tool palette, and I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to grab my placeholder box from my image placeholder box, okay? And now every place I decide okay, note how I place that inside the inner area of that those okay so 
these are all not live areas. These are all space areas, okay? Now, so anything I decide to do here is going to be mathematically correct, okay? So suppose these are images, okay? On, oh, I don't know, your portfolio page. Every one of these is going to fall into a position that's mathematically correct. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so that's why you want to, to okay, and then suppose, let's say that my type on my portfolio page is up here, okay, and, and you know, then I have some more type down here that is, is whoops, sorry, you know, describing the, the piece. Okay, so, and that's what my page would look like. Um, so, you know, you can see every one of these is, has this relationship to each other. So there's harmony, there's visual harmony in this page, okay? And that is the basic essence that's behind using a grid, is to place your, your elements in a, in a situation where they're mathematically correct, okay? So if you guys have any questions about this at all, just get me a holler and I will be glad to explain it further, okay? Thanks, guys. Hey, sorry this took so long. Thanks.